Hello, acute angels. This is Teacher Anna, and welcome to our Math Grade 10 class. In this video, we will start exploring the world of Mathematics 10 by generating patterns. Of course, at the end of this lesson, you are expected to generate patterns. But what do we mean by patterns? Well, pattern is a design where things are arranged following a certain rule. In short, it is a list of things that are in order. Actually, patterns are everywhere. We can find patterns in nature, shapes, events, and numbers. Just like in the picture shown in your screen, the sunflower seeds follow a certain direction. Another example is wheels of any vehicle. It follows a certain pattern too. Anywhere you go, you would only see a round-shaped wheels. It is like patterns set a standard. In mathematics, patterns can be seen in variables, shapes, and set of numbers. When we say variables, they are the quantity that may change within the context of a mathematical problem or experiment. Typically, we use letters to represent it. For example, what is the next variable in the given sequence? A, Z, B, Y, C, X. Looking closely at the given, we can say that A is the first letter of the alphabet, while Z is the last letter. B is the second letter, and Y is the second to the last. C is the third letter, and X is the third to the last. Therefore, following the rule of the sequence, our next letter would be the fourth letter of the alphabet, and that is letter D. Again, the next variable is D. Let's proceed to the next given. In here, we have shapes. What would be the next shape in the given sequence? Square, triangle, triangle, square, triangle, 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 square. Looking closely at the given sequence, we can conclude that every time we have a square, a triangle follows. So the next shape is triangle. Again, the next shape is triangle. Next is numbers. What is the next number in 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18? Taking a closer look at our given, for us to get the next term, we add 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. So the next term after 18 would be 18 plus 3 which is equal to 21. Again, the next number is 21. Since we are talking about mathematics, we will focus on the number patterns. Number patterns in math is also known as sequence. So, what is sequence? Sequence is a set of numbers written in a special order following a definite pattern. When we say the terms are in order, we are free to define what order that is. It can be in increasing order, decreasing order, or alternate, but they must follow a definite pattern. Like in the previous example, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and 21. This one is a sequence because it follows a definite pattern, and that is adding 3 to the preceding terms. Another note that we should remember about sequence is, sequence is like a set, except the terms are in order, because in set, the order doesn't matter. Also, in sequence, a certain number may appear several times, but in set, it doesn't. 
Sequence is like a set because it has members too. Members is also known as term or element. In this example, 3, 5, 7, 9 are the members. In arrangement of the members, of course, we called the first one to appear as the first member or first term. Then it follows by the second term and so on and so forth. And if you found three dots at the end of a sequence, it means the list goes on forever. Now, let us see if you really understand our lesson. Try to identify if the given set of numbers shown in your screen is sequence or not. The first one is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on and so forth. Is it a sequence or not? Well, very good. The answer is yes. This is a sequence because it has a certain rule. We multiply 2 in all the preceding terms to get the next term. Next is 1, 5, 2, 8, 9, 4, 3, 6, 7. Is it a sequence or not? That is correct. This one is not an example of a sequence because clearly it doesn't follow a certain pattern. For us to get 5, we need to add 1 to 4. To get 2, we subtract 3 to 5. Then to get 8, we add 6 to 2. Again, this is not an example of a pattern. Next is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on and so forth. Is it a sequence or not? Very good! This one is considered as an example of a sequence. As mentioned earlier, a sequence can be in increasing order, decreasing order, or it can be in alternate order. In this one, we have alternating zeros and ones as a pattern. For the last one, we have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Is it a sequence or not? Well, you've got it right. It is an example of a sequence because for us to get all the next term, we subtract 1. Now, let's talk about the two classification of sequence. We have the finite sequence and the infinite sequence. Alright, when we say finite sequence, it is a sequence that ends. For instance, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. The sequence starts at 2 and it ends at 10. For infinite sequence, it is a sequence that keeps going and going. They have no end. The most common example of infinite sequence is the counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on and so forth. Also, an easy way to identify if the given sequence is infinite, look for an ellipsis at the end. It is represented by a three dots. Again, look for it at the end because if it is in the middle, it means it has an end, which is an example of a finite sequence. Now, can you tell me what is the classification of this sequence? 20 25, 30, 35, and so on and so forth. Very good! This one is infinite because it has an ellipsis at the end. Next is 1, 3, 5, and 7. Is it finite or infinite? 
great. This is a finite sequence because it has an N. It ends on number 7. The third one, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Is it finite or infinite? That is correct. This one is a finite sequence because it ends on 1. For the last one, we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on and so forth. Is it a finite or infinite? Very good. This is infinite because it doesn't end. Lastly, we will talk about how we defined a sequence. In defining a sequence, we use equation or formula. And there are two ways to define it. The general term of a sequence and the recursive form of a sequence. When we say general term, we are looking for the formula used in the sequence so that we can determine a certain term without getting them all. In our example, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth. We need to identify the rule used here so that we can get other terms like the 50th term. Our first term is 2. We represent every term by a sub the place of the term. For this, we have a sub 1. To get a sub 2, we add 2 to the first term. So we have 2 plus 2 which is equal to 4. Or it can be 2 plus 2 multiplied to 1 which is also equal to 4. For the third term, we have to add 2 twos in the first term. 2 plus 2 plus 2 which is equal to 6. In other form, it can be written by 2 plus 2 multiplied on how many times we should add 2 to the first term. We have 2 plus 2 multiplied to 2. It is equal to 6. The same thing goes for the fourth term and fifth term. Thus, we can conclude for the general term 2 plus 2 multiplied to n minus 1. As you can see on the given illustration, the one we multiplied to 2 is always less to the value of the sub of a. So again, our general term is 2 plus 2 multiplied to n minus 1. But as you notice, this one is not yet simplified. We can multiply 2 to n minus 1, which will give us 2n minus 2. 2 plus 2n minus 2 is equal to 2n. Because we have 2 minus 2 which is equal to 0. Therefore, the general term for the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth is 2n. For instance, if you want to get the 50th term, we just substitute 50 on the value of n. The 50th term then would be 2 times 50 which is equal to 100. Do you want to check it? Well, you may do so by writing the whole list of the sequence. Let's have another one. Our given sequence is 1, 4, 7, 10, and 13. First term is 1. For us to get the next term, we add 1, 3. In other form, it is written as 1 plus 3 multiplied to 1. Third term, we add 2, number 3. Writing it in another form, that would be 1 plus 3 multiplied to 2. The same thing goes for the fourth and fifth term. So, if we will take a deeper look on how we arrive on the given terms, we can say that our general term would be 1 plus 3 multiplied to n minus 1. As you notice, the one that we multiplied to 3 is always 1 less to the place of the term. 1 plus 3 multiplied to n minus 1 is equal to 
1 plus 3n minus 3. And 1 minus 3 is equal to 2. For this given sequence, our general term is 3n minus 2. How about the recursive form? Well, in recursive form, it is like the opposite of the general term. In here, instead of a sequence, the given is the general term and one term. We will be using them in identifying the first few terms of a sequence. For example, write the first five terms of the sequence if the first term is 3 and the general term is 2 multiplied to a sub n minus 1 minus 1. The first term is given which is 3. As for a sub 2 or the second term, we will be using the general term. 2 multiplied to a sub n minus 1 minus 1 is equal to 2 multiplied to a sub 2 as value of n minus 1 which is basically a sub 1, then minus 1. 2 multiplied to a sub 1, which is equal to 3, minus 1 is equal to 5. We will then use the general formula for us to get all the 5 terms. Doing that, for the third term, our answer would be 9. Fourth term, 17. And for the fifth term, we have 33. Again, the first five terms of the sequence is 3, 5, 9, 17, and 33. Did you get it right? Well, that's great. And that's all you need to know about generating patterns. I hope you are now ready to answer your learning activity sheets related to it. Again, when we say pattern, it is a design where things are arranged following a certain rule. In short, it is a list of things that are in order. Once again, I am Teacher Anna and see you on another Matinique episode. Thank you and keep safe.